Welcome back everyone and today uh, Sean and I are on a bespoke picture frame. It's only 800 by 700 in dimensions and 125 mil deep. But it's for an artist who's putting some clay figurines inside it. It needs wording with light shining through. Um, it's got three layers, so let's run you through. So here's the top view. There you go. Top view of it there. Um, the green bit is the glass. Yellow bit is the middle backing. And the pink bit is the backing. And you can see the profile of the timber. It's, um, it's about 125. Um, deep and the front of it is 45 and we've had to to get that Molding on this timber. We've had to run it through the spindle and the table saw to give us that shape And if you can see here, this is what we're trying to achieve. Here's all the working outs um, Working out how it's all gonna work Working out the thicknesses of every single piece the backing the glass the middle the void that we need um, so basically this guy who's an artist, he's got some clay Tom and Jerry figures and they're going to go within, within the void. So in between the glass and the middle backing, and there the figurines are going to sit in that space. He wants a fake mouse hole, on the, you can see the fake mouse door on the side, and a little hole cut out at the top. Um, the, the middle backing, which is this one, is going to have writing on it as well, which is going to be CNC'd. And where it says middle voids, there's going to be a Philips Hue light inside there that's going to shine through the backing or the middle backing. Um, so what we're trying to achieve today is biscuiting these frame pieces that we've made up. You can see the profile of it here. And all four pieces have been made, two at 700, two at 800. And we use the combination of the spindle made a little video on that I'm not sure which one I'm gonna put on first this or the spindle video and um, you can see the rebate block use that to give me to make one or two of the rebates and the table saw did the rest we then used um, u-pole two-pack filler to fill any saw marks um, and any lumps and bumps that the spindle sort of left us and any imperfections Sanded it back with P60 and sort of get rid of the actual lumps and bumps and give us a nice flat finish. And then we went over with a fine filler as well. There we go, ready mixed, fine filler. This stuff is brilliant. It does go absolutely solid. If you put too much of this stuff on, it is really hard to sand off. You've got to start with a really rough paper, work your way down. This is the stage that we're at. All sanded up, P60, P120, P240 on everything that you see. Um, we use the trimmer, um, the micro round cutter that you've seen in one of my videos. If not, that'll probably be at the top of the video right now to watch that. To give us these lovely round radiuses. You can see they're nice and smooth. Because ultimately this is going to get professionally sprayed. Once it's put together, it's going to be sprayed in satin white PU paint, I believe. So it had to be a really, really smooth finish. We've done our best. The um, sprayer is going to have to, the sprayer guy is going to have to do um, his best on it as well, prime it, and then any imperfections he's going to have to fill it once more. But anyway, let's move on to how we're going to connect this frame together. I didn't want to just connect the frame together with a glue joint. It had to have some kind of dowel or biscuit joint on the joints. So we've made up this little jig which is a piece of 25mm as a flat surface. Let's look down the side. We put a piece of 6mm on it first. So there's, there's the first layer of 6mm with a mitre the other way. We then put another piece on top of it with a mitre going the, the opposite way. Our timber that we're actually putting a biscuit in slips into that joint. And this one gives us a shoulder for the biscuit art to actually sit on. It's going to sit like that. Yeah, so we had to do that. We had to lift up slightly. Otherwise, yeah, that's fine. Otherwise, when we biscuited it, the biscuit would be too low on the surface and come through the face of the frame. But anyway, there's our jig. We're making it completely flush at the front. And we've got little packers that we've clamped down so we don't mark the timber. Got our extraction, so our biscuit are 
is connected to the Hoover. Unfortunately, we haven't got the Makita biscuit up because that sort of blew up on us. Hoover on. I've got a little mark on there where I'm going to start my first biscuit. Um, because I'm doing a wider slot, not just one, because I want to get a couple of biscuits in there. Um, even if we cut a biscuit in half and do one and a half biscuits, I want to get as much support as possible. So I'm going to plunge it and move it along. So let's start with that line now. It's a bit noisy because it's an herbal biscuit, really. It's a bit of a crap biscuit. Biscuit. I mean, our biscuit is only half of that. Let's see if I've got one lying around. This one is only a P. This P. What am I talking about? That's not sandpaper. This is a size ten. We're going to use zeros, but we're going to just get one in, in there with the zeros, and then just fill up that space with another half biscuit. Um, just because because it's timber, it, it can be prone to twisting and cupping. We have used acclimatized timber that's been lying around for a long time, so this shouldn't have any moisture left in it to sort of shrink and curl. But if it did, we want those joints to stay nice and tight. It's getting professionally sprayed, so I don't want the joints to open up and crack. It's gonna look horrendous. So I'm trying to give this joint as much support as possible. So I'm gonna crack on and do all four. It's gonna be a little bit different when we turn this around. We're gonna just have to put a new mark on the jig because we have to do the opposite end of this now. <laughs> Right, so we're gluing this up now. I didn't think we were going to be able to film it and glue it up, but let's see if we can make it work. We're putting loads of glue in. We don't want to under glue it. Doesn't matter if it squidges out. We we'll just clean it up at the end. That's the beauty of it not being a hardwood or anything like that. Yeah, we can fill it and sand it, and it's getting sprayed. And clean up the glue at the end. So someone's putting glue in the biscuit slot first. We've already put water on these edges, like I said before. Um, I always put water on a joint um, so the timber doesn't suck out the moisture out of the actual glue. Give you a weak joint, that's what I was always told. Some joint, some biscuits are tighter than others, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, we've already done this one. Put some paper under the corners. Yeah, let's get the paper under these corners as well. I don't want it sticking to the veneer underneath, don't we? Try and get that in. It's all right, any glue could be wiped off. Cool. Give you a little wobble. Remember that ratchet is gonna sort of pull that together. Okay, so that's ready. We decided to square it up. We're just going to have the frame follow the board underneath, and then we'll just put clamps on the top of the frame to the board to hold it square. Okay, let's get the ratchet strap on. Just about managed it. That's pretty good. Joints are nice and closed up. Um, as you can see, we use the board here to line the corner up and to keep it square. And we've just put little packers on the top of the frame. Or, well, it depends which way you look at it. We put packers at the, the top and we clamped it down so it keeps it square and flat. And Sean's just going to wipe off any glue that he can see. Less cleaning up at the end. That tiny bit of glue spilling out here. Get those sort of bits out. That joint's quite nice. What's this joint like? Yeah, that's pretty nice. Half a mil line there. Not too bad overall. So that is the frame glued up, and we've taken the measurements of all the rebates so we can order in um, that CNC'd piece. We can order in the glass and we cut the backing.